Like everyone can't go where you want to go. Everyone can't do what you want to do. And everyone can't be you. You see, like we're created with different skill sets, different talents. And we all see the world differently. You see, most time the only thing holding you back it's it's not even your environment. Of course, your environment can structure you, your environment could shape you. We all hear this every time, nature over nurture. But the biggest driver in your life is you. You see, we all have the power over our mind if we choose to. You can only control the things that goes on inside you and not the thing that happens around you. Of course, things are going to happen around you that it's outside your control. But those things outside you that challenges you would help you grow inside. They would push you forward. They would bring you face to face with the things that threatens you, the thing that scares you, the things that you've been running away from. But we all know we all get better by overcoming they say no man is ever happy that has never had the opportunity to test themselves. So all these challenges, all these obstacles, all these up and downs that come our way, they make us stronger. They make us brighter. They sharpen us. They make us understand like, yeah, even though we've gone through a lot, we are strong enough to live, to face tomorrow, to improve ourselves, to work on ourselves. When we go through challenges, when we go through obstacles, when we go through up and down, breakdowns in, in, in family, in workplace, whatever, that brings us face to face with ourselves. So is it that we run or we we'll face the challenges and become better? You see, when you face challenges, there's always two options. In every situation you get into, there's always two options. Where you go from that is what makes the difference. Because we're always going to come up against challenges every day, every time, every month in different circumstances. You know, when you move into a new environment, into a new place, when you meet new people, you spend more time learning, understanding, building yourself. Because now you are put in a different environment but when you come out from that place you become better why because you've had the opportunity to learn and this is what life is about learning through our fault learning through our mistakes learning through ups and downs but trying to use it to get better but not repeating the same mistake over and over that means we're not growing that means we're not getting better that means we're not advancing that means we're stuck in the same place you know, they say that's the um, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So if you come over challenges and you fail, that's fine. But try to improve from that. You don't want to keep repeating the same class over and over again. Even that will wear anyone down. But you want to learn from your mistakes and get better. So when you come face to face with challenges, you know, yeah, I am in this situation, but I am going to overcome it. That is the power of learning. That's the power of growth. That's the power of getting better. They say in life, our competition is ourselves. There's no competition than you. A lot of people get better. Why? Because they would train over and over. They would practice over and over. They would, when everyone goes to sleep, they go back and practice. They say uh, Ronaldo or Kobe, Kobe Bryant, um, the basketballer, after training, even after matches, he steps onto the practice court and spends an hour practicing. So how can you beat that? So most time in life, we are our own competition. We are our own competition. If you talented at someone or if someone is as talented as you, as smart as you, in every field, the only way you can get better than that person is by practicing longer than that person because you have come to play with exactly the same thing. 
the only way you're going to get better is through practicing. And that just tells you, you have no competition but yourself. So in every environment you find yourself, in any situation you find yourself, you have the opportunity to get better. You have the opportunity to improve yourself. Why? Because you have no competition but yourself. You are the competition. There is no other competition there except you, except that which you've put in front of you. They said we are our biggest obstacles. Why? Because we make the decision to go or not to go. Just like when we come up against any obstacle, we have the decision to run or to fight. And this is all down to you. Just like a seed, just like an orange seed. An orange seed will never bring out an apple. It's always an orange seed. So everything you need to become what you need to be, it's already in you from the beginning. You just have to find it. You just have to take time, observe yourself and say to yourself, how do I improve? How do I fight my challenges? How do I stop running? Because I tell you, no one out there is going to fix you but you. No one out there is going to help you grow until you're ready to grow. No one out there is going to change anything in your life until you're ready to change. The only thing that changes in life is you. When you change, things around you begins to change. It's just like well, after you've gone through education, you gain some degree, then your salary increases. And this is what happens in life. You learn something and then your value increases. And we human beings, we're all about value. We're all about value. Why? Because we're all trying to sell ourselves Constantly to our partners, to our workplace, to colleagues, you are a commodity. And once you start understanding that, then you start understanding your value is in you. And the focus should be on you. Not whatever happens outside you, around you. You only have control about what goes in inside you. And if you can change what's inside you, then you can change what's going around you, you are the key. You are the major key. Fear, challenges, obstacles, these are the price for a new beginning. These are the price for a new beginning. At every road, at every circumstance, we're going to come to a juncture. We're like, where do we go from here? What road do we take? What path do we take? What do we choose? So it's up to you. You either see challenges as adversities or as potential. It's really up to you because the challenges, they are what they are. The obstacles, they are what they are. Ups and downs, they are what they are. The difference is how you see them. That's totally, that's all the changes. How you see them. Perception. It's just like when someone says something to you, most time it's your perception how you've read the tone of the voice that leads you to react the way you've reacted why but the person have said the same thing exactly the same way it's just like when a friend says oh are you stupid based on the tone you know the joke and then when someone just comes to say are you stupid so it's all based on the perception. It's all based on how we've chosen to see it. You can either see anything that's coming around you as potential or as adversity. You either take it, you want to challenge it, you want to go against it, you want to use it to grow, or you let it overcome you and then you're ready to run. It's all down to you. So remember, it all starts with you. But the most important thing is how you see yourself. How you see yourself. Because remember, you can never be more than how you see yourself. There's no way you can ever be more than how you see yourself. It all starts with you. Of course, what other people think about you, the value you bring and all that. But how you see yourself, that's the starting point. There, there's there's a this flea flea you know uh, lies they can jump 30 foot or three foot high but once they kept 
in a jar and that jar is sealed and they try to jump and there's a barricade there after a few tries they stop why it's not because they can't jump higher but because of the perception of the jar they stop jumping and even when the lid of the jar is taken off now they're free to jump they are used to just sitting there and wandering about that's what life happens to us like you're growing up you have so much potential so much belief so much dream and life happens like things are not working your way ups and down and you just lose yourself you forget who you are you forget the 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 challenges you've gone through what you've overcame what brought you here you now all you see is just the beginning like yeah this is me i can't get better i can't develop there's nothing i can do i'm a loser why that is down to you that is just you nothing else is changing that but you nothing else is changing but how you see yourself you same person but you now have a less value why because you see yourself amounting to nothing so start today start today by seeing yourself as more than all these obstacles, all these challenges, all these ups and downs, all these troubles. Start seeing yourself as the person who can overcome, the person who is willing to learn, the person who is willing to listen, the person who is willing to try and fail, the person who is willing to go up against the best regardless and stand up and say, yeah, I will try again. Why? Because it's all about taking a chance. And all this does not mean, okay, you're not going to fail or you're always going to make the right decision. But even if you make the wrong decision, now you know. Now you know what not to do. Exactly what I said before. Now you're not repeating failures over and over. They said the, the worst thing to do is nothing. You either do something, you fail and try again, or but not doing nothing is the worst because then you haven't learned from nothing you've cocooned yourself you've remained in the same stagnant I, I i i go around and i see people who've been doing the same thing for 20 50 years very unhappy about it but why they can't do nothing why because they're so scared of leaving the circle the friend the family what people would say and they've they got stuck in one place why because they don't want to be seen differently. Forgetting that the most important thing in life is how you see yourself, how you carry yourself, how you drive yourself. You are the engine of the car. Imagine a car without an engine. It could have the best body in the world, the best interior in the world. Everyone could admire it, but it wouldn't be able to move. Why? Because it has no engine. The most important thing, it has no engine. And then when people look at the car first, just the first thing they see is the bodywork, the exhaust. They never spend time to look at the engine. Why? Because that's what people are. People just see what you are from outside. But you know who you are. You know what you are. You know what you're made of. You know what you can do. I hear people say this every time I know what I'm capable of. I know what I'm capable of. It doesn't matter how other people see me, but I know what I can do. So why don't you apply that every single time? Because you know what you can do. You know who you are. You are who you are. No one knows you better than you. So look, we are all like diamonds. Without the pressure, you would never become beautiful. No, you just become some fossil. Without for diamond not going through the pressure of decades of being under, you know, the dirt, it will never have the same value. Most of us just want to lie on the surface like a rock because we believe we've been seen. But to create value, to develop into something, to become something, you need to be buried under the soil. You need to go to a thinking place. You need a place you can grow your own. Through yourself, individual, power, focus. Most of us are so scared of that place. We would rather be where we get approval, where we get appraisal, 
where people like us, where people approve of us. Look, none of us creates the difficulty we'll find ourselves in. No, no, sometimes it's not your fault. But you are where you are now. You have to use what you have to get out from where you are. There's no point in complaining about the ups and downs, the where you are. No, you are where you are. How do you get out from there? How do you develop? How do you improve? How do you work better? How do you become something? That's the question. Look, they say every five minutes you complain, that's every five minutes you've lost in your life. So it's all up to you. You know? Most time we sacrifice yesterday for today. It's easy to just coast along and, you know, just carry on, you know, living a life of no goal, a life of no destination. But that's, they say happiness comes from responsibilities. Happiness comes from, you know, knowing that you're doing something. Happiness comes from knowing that you're walking towards a desired goal. That's progression. That's what happiness is. I haven't seen one person who just sits somewhere and nothing is going on in their life. They just say, oh, I'm happy. I'm chasing happy. No. Happiness comes from people always looking forward to something. Is that they're looking forward to holiday, to a, uh, a holiday in the beach, to Christmas, to something, to a present. That's what happiness. You can apply that same goal in your life. Walking towards something. That is happiness. You know? Like they say, everything that requires or what having in life requires some hard work requires some sacrifice requires some discipline you know what is sacrifice what is discipline discipline is like me forgoing every other thing for one thing now knowing that if i invest today while i forgo every other thing my tomorrow will be better that's what sacrifice is but and every sacrifice requires hard work Nothing comes easy. If they do, everyone will be successful. Everyone will be happy. Everyone will, will be living um, a fulfilling and rewarding life. It's like having a prize or belt, especially in boxing. You know, I use that boxing analogy because I, I love boxing. Clean contest. You know, you only get handed the prize after the fight. And and that's how it is in everything. After a prize or after a fight comes a prize. So everything that's worth having, you have to go through a fight. doesn't come easy. Uh, there's a quote attributed to Victor Franco. Victor Franco says, Man's main concern is not to gain pleasure. Or avoid pain but rather to see meaning in life and and I and I and I interpret that meaning in life meaning walking towards something walking toward the desired goal and nightingale say you know happiness is walking towards a desirable goal a desirable goal you know that's that's why I say walking towards something it could be anything could be moving to a new place, starting a new job, new relationship, working towards something. There's always something to work at. There's always something to get better at. There's always, like I said before, you are your own challenges. You are your own obstacle. Nothing will stand in your way once you decide you're going to go for it. Nothing. Because as human, we are super, as being human is super already. Just being human is super ready. Being human means you've been able to see the future, which no other animal could do. Being able to predict the future. Being able to forecast the future. This is super already. So you already have that superpower in you. It just depends on how you use it. If you're going to use it or wait for other people to approve of you. You don't need an approval. So I'm asking you today, you know, looking back how far you've come and where you want to go, what is that meaning? 
in life that is driving you? What's the reason? What's the purpose? What's the goal? You know, Marcus Aurelius says, you have the power over your mind, not outside, not outside of you, but inside of you. Yeah, we all have the power over our mind, the power to control ourselves, the power to make decisions, the power to choose or not to choose. We all do. There's another quote attributed to Lichienko. He says, those who have a why can bear almost anything. How? You know, when your why is big enough, you would find the how. Almost anything becomes manageable. And you see this when you see maybe single parents struggling to feed the kids and they, they have a big why. So they find a way. So we all have that in us. We all have that, you know. It just we have to get to that place where we think is our why big enough? Are we willing to sacrifice every other thing for just this one why? Once you get to that place, I tell you, everything becomes clear. You know, you're just driving in one direction. There's no complicated, you know. Of course, we're going to still have challenges in our life, ups and downs. But our goal is clear. Our goal is dream. Steve Harvey says he used to have a vision board. And maybe some people believe in it and maybe some others don't. Jim Rohn says, write things down. Write things down. Because your mind is, your mind just like wants to replace itself. Doesn't want to store thousands of things. But once you write things down, you always see it. You always know, am I, you know, doing what I set out to do or not? Steve Harvey says he has this vision board on his phone. When he turns his phone on, he looks at that every day and that drives him like, this is what I have to do. I'm not doing this. Or maybe I'm spending so much time watching TV, doing this or that. No. Jordan Peterson says, students spend on average six hours a day of wasted time just surfing the internet, watching YouTube, cut videos or nothing. And six times a day, he calculated that to means like a lost earning of $50,000 per annum and these are just students then you want to talk about employees professionals so they say pick your sacrifice the same general person say pick your sacrifice choose the thing you want to give your life for life should be serious but we should always be able to laugh ourselves i can't remember who this um quote was attributed to it says as human we should have the capacity to laugh at ourselves that human was given vision to see what we would not, but we were compensated with humor just to laugh over things. So you should be, regardless of what you're going through, you should be in a place to be able to laugh at yourself. You know, we always talk about lack of time. We don't have enough time. I'm so busy. We are always busy doing something but what is it with busy doing that's the thing what is it we're busy doing you see everyone that be so busy with what is it we're busy doing what is it we're achieving if you take a day or a week of your time and spread out what you've achieved from that week i tell you spend more time doing nothing than you spend more time doing something you know social media is a double-edged sword it's a double-edged sword we all spend a lot of time social media in these days we don't have time to do what really drives us forward. In Carl Newport's book, he to, uh, Deep Walk, he talks about he talks about we are so busy these days liking social media posts that we don't have time to focus on our today. You know that we don't have time to focus on our today because what we do today will make our tomorrow better. But we're so busy trying to pass time. People say that I'm just trying to pass time. I'm just trying to, you know, relax. And we're losing every single day. So what are you doing today? What are you sacrificing today for a better tomorrow? You know, like choose your sacrifice. I say this again. Like Jordan Pearson says that. Choose your sacrifice. Because we all have to do some sacrifice of some sort you know like in the old testament abraham used to go out take his young um sheep or calf and slaughter 
you know to god just to show how serious he is we all have to do i mean thank god these days we don't have to do those type of sacrifice anymore but we still have to do some sacrifice of some sort we have to sacrifice something just take a look at it you can't become good at everything a basketballer probably horrible at football a footballer horrible at tennis a tennis player horrible at ping pong but you have to choose one sacrifice and become good at that and that's what it is that's what you're going to be celebrated at. you can't be good at every single thing look at michael jordan he left basketball to play baseball he was mediocre at that like the best basketballer in the world he was mediocre at basket at, at baseball that just tells you choose your sacrifice choose something you can never be good at every single thing no just choose something everyone has we all have this massive temptations like you can you know speak to like i do speak to very very skilled and disciplined people you you very efficient people like it's not like they're not tempted to spend time you know but they believe like their tomorrow is based on their today's sacrifice like i know like if i don't write or send out this manuscript today there might not be tomorrow but even writing and sending out today doesn't mean it's gonna work today but it gives me the hope that tomorrow might become better and so like i always look i say to my friends every time sorry i haven't liked or commented on your post which is important but i am choosing my sacrifice every day i'm like when i of course i do the same thing like everyone but i limit it to like is this an hour a day half an hour a day because there is bigger sacrifice liking your post and commenting and of course it might give you an uplift for a, a, a minute or so but it's not going to change anything in your life but for me it might have deprived me the time to focus my skill to grow myself to become better of course i know it's an hour but every minute counts life is hard to win you have to look to yourself you have to look to yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what is it you want do you want to be one of those who have this lent helplessness you know i grew up in africa and i see this every time I, some people say you know like poverty puts you in that position of lent helplessness but then i know a lot of people who've come from poverty who have sacrificed who have push themselves to become better so you cannot make excuses like oh you know this lent helplessness i see a lot of people who they rely totally on others outside some outside of themselves they believe they have no impact on how to change their life so don't become part of those get rid of those lent helplessness you are the key if anything will change in your life, it's down to you. Nothing else will change if you don't change. That's just the matter of faith. No one will come to you if you have no value to give. That's it. We are commodities. When you start looking at that, we are commodities. There's a saying like, no man is your friend, no man is your enemy, but every man is your teacher. We are commodities. Listen, learn get rid of the lent helplessness know the world the value everything around you depends on you the world values you how you value yourself so stop playing small you are accepting a limitation placed by others on you not even believing in yourself sure you pray time to time or daily multiple times a day but you should always pray after you've given your sacrifice, you've done the best, you've given 100%, you've chased your goal. That's when you pray for additional support, not praying before you've taken any steps. It always says you need something to grease your elbow. They always have to be an elbow there for you to grease. So 
Don't let a prayer, don't let your prayer become activity, something you just have to do because no, let it be something that you believe in because you've done all you have to do because you've sacrificed all you have to do because you're walking towards your goal and then let your prayer be an addition to it, an addition to it, gracing your elbow, lighting the fire. I tell you today, realize you can change your life. You realize you're in control. Judge Elliot says, never too late to be what you want to be. Never too late to be what you want to be. Like regardless of the obstacles, the up and down, whatever you've gone through, you can start afresh. You can have a new beginning. You can have a goal. You can say to yourself, this is new me. Especially as we're approaching new year, you know, most people always have new year resolutions and everything. You can say, my new year resolution is to go after my goal. And not only I'm going to write it down, but I'm going to pour it somewhere I'm going to see every day because that is my goal. Why? I am sacrificing this year for next year. You know, you could plan a whole year like 2023. I'm sacrificing 2023 because 2024, this is going to be me. That is goal setting. You know, 99% of what we want in life is physical manifestation of some sort. Whatever it may be, you know, whatever we're doing, we want it to manifest in our life or in, 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 in our life in some physical way. You know, whatever we've learned, whatever we've observed, whatever we've implemented, we all want it to come down to some physical manifestation in some way. More money, more house, more cars, more women, more men, more something. There's always more something. So whatever we want right here on this earth, we want it to master, manifest in some physical way. Sometime, you know, short time, less than a year, sometime longer time, over a year. But we all want them to come to pass, to come true. I mean, some people, before we move on to the other side, for those who believe in life after death, yeah, so what I'm saying, like, everything we want in life, everything we pray for, everything we wish for, is for some sort of physical manifestation in life. But why is it what the kind of act we attribute to these things are not physical? You know? For some reason, they're not physical. And we see successful people, they give. It's a give and take world. You create value to give and then you get back. So we want all this physical thing, but then our only belief is to have some spiritual activity towards it. We forgo the physical manifestation, physical activity to bring in the physical thing we want. It's like trying to buy something with a dream. Trying to buy something with you know with a promise. And maybe this is because we've meant to believe. And maybe sometimes this is just because some people, you know, they've they've been told all their issues, all their problems, everything is spiritual. You know, that for you to attain your goal in life, it has to be spiritual. That that is you only have to take chance in what you only believe in and don't know you know most people take 99% spiritual actions for their 99% physical needs and they are wondering why nothing is changing i mean take a simple example you want to harvest corn by september here in the uk you must dig a hole sow that seed by March at least. See, that's 90%. It costs 90%. Then you water, clear the weed, still physical actions, you see. And within that 99%. And then the 1%, you pray for favorable weather. And that warms diseases, pests, don't eat your crop. You see, those are outside your control. 
there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you could get pesticide and whatever, but there could be storm. There could be, you know, low cost. There could be farming. There's a lot of things outside our control. But first, the 99% within our control is action. We have to take that action first. So why are you doing this? Because look, look, we are no prayer alone. God alone is not going to. God alone is not going to come and dig the soil and do the planting for you. He made you and he gave you the power, the power of choice. So you could choose to do or not to do. You know, so he gave you the power of choice so you could do and then the power of belief so you could leave the rest, the one person that outside your control up to him for favorable weather, a favorable workplace, a favorable, you know, those are outside your control. But what I'm saying, are you doing what's within your control? Are you doing the 99 percent? Are you working towards a desirable goal or are you just in some kind of lent helplessness and wishing everything happens for you without you contributing to you know any of these things so whoever sold you that believe that for your physical manifestation you only need spiritual input to tell you the honest truth they are thinking for you and not for you because because of your ignorance and you know what your ignorance benefits them that's the question you should be having that whoever is telling you those these things whoever is thinking for you are they taking the same actions as you haven't they taken any steps for themselves have they relied hundreds percent on their physical manifestation in spiritual activities no you know the same bible tells us that we are our greatest challenge like we are at the opportunities and the challenges that comes our way you know, with being human. Only us can fix our own problem. You know, but the same you have been made to believe that your success or failure in life lies with other people. You know, that we need to forgo our responsibilities to other people in order to attain where we ought to be in life that is the biggest helplessness lent helplessness i've seen people relying on other people to get them from a to b as human our first primordial instinct is self preservation what is self preservation self survival that is no one would think about you first except themselves and when they think about you, what they're thinking about, how do you fit into their plan? How do you work for them? How do you contribute to their growth? How do you make them something? They're not thinking, you know, for you. Why should they? It's up to you to think for yourself. So now don't get me wrong. So many things in life are mysteries and so many people i know are trying to find meaning you know to things in life you know you know some people some people go through stress that you know is so stressful or through obstacles is so stressful they they vacate the city the life and then they move to the, the mountains to become a monk or a nun or something and some people like get everything they have into a camper van and start traveling around everyone goes everyone finds a way to you know overcome that some people go into drugs alcohol some people a lot of people are going through things every day trying to be something why some run away from it some come face to face with it look not everyone could become the number one not everyone can become a winner but we can all become successful in our own way and that's why someone would decide, look, I want to go traveling for a year, for two years. I don't want to work. I just want to 
we all can become successful in our own way. But I'm saying, don't stumble onto that. Your success should be planned out. Look, I've not known any single person that has ever stumbled onto success. No. Everything in life has to be planned out. Life is serious. Life is serious. Everything has to be planned out. You can't stumble onto success. No. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. You see? Even when we want, like, you know, spiritual enlightenment in life and, you know, whatnot, we all need to take a physical action, you know? To move from A to B, you need physical action. So this is what I'm saying. Everything you do, there has to be some physical aspect to it. Of course, pray. I'm a believer in prayer and everyone believes in whatever they believe. But what I'm saying, you need that physical activity. As well as spiritual, but first physical. Because it's life and life is hard. You know, tell me anyone you know who, you know, is successful by just being spiritual only. No physical activity, no bringing people together, no gathering people together. No. Because sometimes the, the thing you think is spiritual is just the way you see it. You need physical action to get from A to B, you know. We all need prayers. We all need worship we only need belief but we need first to set a goal walk towards it and then pray towards it it's like planting a seed and watering it one activity is the planting the other activity is the watering you need to two to go hand in hand you can't just keep watering an empty soil and expect you know your crop a crop that you haven't planted to grow that's why you need the physical activity to plant and then the watering activity to grow. You know? So saying, regardless of what people are telling you, regardless of what you see, successful people preaching to you, no one has ever gotten there just on belief alone, just on spirituality alone. There is 99% activity, physical, and then some spiritual activity. They are hard to find. So what I'm saying to you today, if you would do just one thing today, start thinking for yourself. Why? Because it's obvious. It's obvious. No one, no single person would think about you, but they would think for you. You know, the problem today is I believe so many people they, they've put in this condition that they meant to believe that they like, you know, there's so many enemies against them, you know, and without an external help, they can never overcome those enemies, you know, that those enemies would crush them. And, and, and honestly, that is where the problem starts because now you've taken the power of self out. You believe in that the everything the battle is external you know and it's always against some easy enemy or hard enemy however you want to plan it but i'm saying this makes you become blind to yourself and then you start looking for what what's not lost no one would ever tell you you are your own enemy no one and everyone knows it. You are your biggest enemy. How, because why? The way you see yourself is the starting point to where you want to go. Whatever you seek to change, you should start with yourself. That is the right and the only place to start with yourself. Even if, even, even, even if you study the Bible properly and not just believe in what you know, you've been told, you would understand that the place to start is within you, with you. That is the battleground. They say that is the battleground. The battleground lies inside of you. They say no man can control others who hasn't conquered themselves. So you cannot control your environment if you can't control yourself. You can't conquer others if you can't 
conquer yourself. Anything without conquering yourself first, you can't achieve anything. So if you need an enemy, and maybe you do, some people need an enemy to push them, just like some people need, you know, past or, you know, past from poverty, from history, from whatever, you know, challenges to push them forward. Some people do, you know. And if you're one of those, you need some motivation, some drive, some energy, something to push you forward. Use yourself as the enemy. Yeah, because sometimes we need an enemy to propel us forward. Use yourself as the enemy. Look within yourself. Practice on how to conquer yourself. Practice on how to make the right, right choice. First, you see, you see this every time in a religious setting. You know, you have to conquer yourself. Maybe it's true, you know, fasting, Lent, uh, period, abstinence. There's always something of some sort that's telling you, look, self-sacrifice, self-conquering. You have to overcome yourself before you point fingers. And this period tells you, look, I can do this. I remember, you know, born Catholic, every day, the first day of fasting is like the, 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 the most difficult. Like, you know, you want to eat, you want to drink. It's like you can't stand on your feet. But after... The first, second, third day, it becomes natural. You get used to it. Your body adapts to it. Why? Because now you can conquer yourself. But you would, would never have known that if you don't try. So nothing is easy. Anything you start, it's difficult. Nothing is easy. Especially when you want to achieve the best things in life, they are the most difficult. Nothing worth having is easy. Then if it is, everyone would have it, I tell you. They all start with like, I could not do this. I can't do that. You know, I, I go back to the word of Seneca. He says, no man is more unhappy for he who never faces adversity. For he has never had the chance to prove himself to himself. And that's what I'm saying. You Most time you need to prove yourself to yourself. Not to any other person, but to yourself. Why? Because that's where the battleground starts. That's where the battleground is drawn. Proving yourself to yourself that you could be better. You could write more. You could read more. You could study more. You could talk more. You could listen more. You could observe more. You could become something more than you are currently today. Why? Because you have the power to be. And when does that start? When you choose. You know, if you go to the circus, you see this lot of elephants and lion being controlled by human. Why? Because they've been confined into that state as a baby, tied to a rope. They, they don't know any better now. They, they don't know that they stronger, 10 times stronger, 50 times stronger than the person who controls them. Why? Because they've been confined into that position of knowing not knowing their what, not knowing like everything, the power, everything lies within them, that they are in charge. They don't know that anymore. So now they feel, they look out to external source for inspiration, for control, to move them, to lead them, to tell them what to do. And that's what happening to most of us these days. We go around forgetting that we are in control. That anything we want in our life is within our reach. We are in charge. We've totally lost that. That we are in charge. You know, not going cost more. I tell you. Sure, you might fail. Beat yourself up. But you have the opportunity to start again, the opportunity to dream again, the opportunity to learn from your mistakes, the opportunity to become better than you have been. That is the power of self. You know, they say there's two ways of learning. Self-taught and through other people's experience, observation. But so while you're reading other books, trying to learn from other people, which is great. So you don't make that same mistake. What are you learning from yourself? You know, it, it, there's a saying from uh, Stephen Pressfield, the war of act or the act of war. He says, our job in life is not to shape ourselves into some 
ideal we imagine. We ought to be, you know, so I, 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 basically what he's saying is like, I, 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 um, our jobs in life is not to shape ourselves into some imaginary idea, some fantasy, you know, of what we imagine our life would be. But to find out, you know, but to find out, but to take the physical steps to find out the ups and downs, the challenges, the failures, the wins, you know, but to find out who we are already and who we are becoming. This is like, you know, who we are already and who we are becoming. That is what's most important to us, who we are now and who we want to be. And how do you get that through goal planning, through goal setting, through becoming better? You know, there's a, I think it's Steve Harvey that says it's like, your gift is you. Your gift is you. You have something to give, something to contribute, something to share. We all are better off and i know the world we all are better off if everyone brings their fuel their sorry their skill set share something and we're not just like you know holding hands feeling helpless waiting for some percentage of people you know the amount of people who run this world is less than one percent that makes everything move is less than one percent and why 99 all the percent just get along with it just happy to be alive you know you know, having the awareness to self-correct lies with us. It lies, it doesn't lie with others. The ability to teach yourself, the ability to get better lies with us. It doesn't lie with others. So this is, I'm going back to that same thing saying we are our own competition. You know this, you know the minute you're giving less in anything, you know that, like, look, you know the minute you're lying, you know the minute you're saying the wrong thing, we all know this. You know, we, you know the minute you're giving less than your best, not only do you find, you know, or not only do you do we feel ourselves when we allow ourselves to give less than our best, we allow the outside world to take over. You know, it's the light and darkness. When there's less light, there's more darkness. There's more light, there's less dark. It's that balance. So you owe it to yourself to give the best you can in every field to become the best you can. That just is enough. You know, the minute you pull back, something takes over. The minute you're not going for it, something else is, is going for it. So it's up to you. It's up to you to say, okay, I'm going to give my best. I'm going to do the best I can. You know, sacrifice. Getting better. You know, discipline. Non efficiency, none of these things comes easy. They are built, they're not inherited. Of course, there might be nature and nurture based on where you went to school, grew up, and whatever. But all these things are built little by little. But once you keep letting it slip little by little, you are either growing or dying. We only get what we are. That's Jim Rohn says that you can only give what you are for your environment to get better. You have to get better. So we'll, we only get what we are, not what, what we wish for, not what we deserve, not what we want, but what we are. Like if you're a trainee today, you cannot get a CEO salary because that's not you. So you would only get what you are. Not what you wish for, not what you desire, no. You know, but they say, but when we endure what we don't want, you know, when you go through the sacrifice, the length period, the, the in the darkness, when we endure what we don't want, then we'll get to enjoy what we really want. That sacrifice, at every stage you go through, we all spend time, you know, investing in what we don't want. But that means the sacrifice of today is the enjoyment of tomorrow. The sacrifice of today is the enjoyment of tomorrow.